Hey cats, welcome to today's talk. It's Ed, afternoon nap bud here. Today I'm going to address some comments that I've received recently from some viewers as to why I review shoes the way I do. I've recently received some interesting comments from a few viewers, perhaps not new viewers, haven't been here before, expecting the same sort of types of review that they've seen in other places. I try and do things in my way and I always will. I'm going to address a few of those queries today and hopefully clear a few things up so it's nice and transparent like a newly washed window. If it's your first time here guys hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I roll out the new videos for you. You can help the channel out a huge amount in terms of that YouTube algorithm too. If you give this video a thumbs up like but also share it with your running buddies. Munch and glad back. So I received a few queries as to why I don't do durometer tests on the foams of the midsoles in the running shoes I review. Why I don't give the outsole a little sort of squeeze or something. I have been known to do that from time to time, but you don't really measure the midsole like that, do you? You put it on foot and run in it and see how it feels. So those durometers that you can buy will measure the toughness, the hardness of various different substances. It's not just foams, they're made for all sorts of different things. It could be rubbers, thermoplastics, even Kevlar you can get a special one that does that who knew i can see why people get excited to see the scores from these tests after all we've got lots of new foams that have recently arrived on the scene but i think it's easy to forget that a shoe is the sum of its parts we don't run on the outside edge of these shoes do we i mean it's interesting to see the geometer scores from there but we run on top of the foam and the different weight of all the different runners out there is going to have a different effect on the foam we've got the full midsole stack underneath our foot along with some sort of foam or perhaps rubberized strobel board on top of that just thinking about it one of the only shoes that i've come across recently that has no strobel board at all is the invincible run you're literally running directly on the zoom x well if you discount the floppy insole that they included. See, just Zoom X in there. That's all there is. And on the A6 Nova Blast, you've actually got another piece of foam in there. Check that out. Who knew? That's why it's so squashy. Those normally run the length of the midsole. Plus, then you've got some type of insole as well. I think a lot of time people call them sock liners over in the US. So measuring the geometer of the midsole material itself is fine, but... What about all the other stuff that's stacked on top of it? The actual on-foot feel is hugely influenced by all of those different materials. I've seen people going to huge extents here by putting these shoes into like fridges and things like that, trying to cool them down so they can measure the durometer at different temperatures. Okay, again, but you've got all those other factors that you're not considering. Nobody can tell me that a fresh slab of Zoom X straight out of the box is going to be the same as one that's maybe got 50 or 60 miles into it. Is the hardness of the foam going to be the same after 200 miles, 300 miles? What about shoes that have got combinations of different midsole materials? Like the Pegasus Turbo, for example, that had React and Zumax. What about the Adios 6? That's got various different foams and different amounts across the midsole. Let's not forget the outsole as well. We have to add that into our sandwich. A harder rubber, perhaps underfoot, is going to really affect the overall midsole cushion. A cheese and pickle sandwich, perhaps with some very thick doorstop style bread. It's going to be vastly different to BLT with, you know, a nice soft loaf, a nice crispy bacon midsole plate. And then of course you've got max cushioned baguettes that are full of all sorts of different combinations. Very... That's basically why I don't include geometer scores. I think that my experience is what people want to hear using the shoe on foot. Before I get on to the next thing, I just want to say I'm not targeting this at anyone in particular. There's about four different YouTube channels that I do watch on a regular basis that review running shoes. I'm pretty sure you know what those are. Everybody's got their own way of doing it and that's absolutely fine with me. Next up, why don't I offer a weight score? Now, in my larger sizes or perhaps somebody like Tim Gross or Andy the Fod Runner, our feet are that bit longer. We've got larger shoes and thus the weight's always going to be higher. Somebody who's got very small feet of course their shoes are going to be that much lighter you know do i base it on the lightness of their shoes against mine well no that would just be ridiculous as such somebody could come up with like a weight score like four out of ten or something 
but what are you basing that against? Is that against all the other shoes that you've got in your collection? If you're just doing faster running, tempo running, not really using many max cushion shoes, then a medium weight shoe is obviously going to get a lower score in that type of rating system, right? Somebody might be put off from trying that shoe out because it's got like only a 4 out of 10 for the weight. I could understand perhaps if you were gauging the weight of a shoe against other shoes of that category for example but then again some maximally cushioned shoes have got like plates and blades put into them as well to aid in the stability so if you think about like the prime x from adidas that's got a huge amount of stack there's plates in there blades rods it's got everything in there the whole kitchen sink that shoe's a bit over 300 grams in my uk size 11 so i could easily give that like a lower weight score couldn't i of five out of ten or something it's not as heavy as the invincible run or the adi star from adidas but it's nowhere near as light as the street fly from nike there's about 100 grams difference there between the two shoes so if i was to give it a rating on weight but not in its category then that just doesn't work that's one of the most effortless you know fatigue lessening shoes that i've got in my whole collection right now the boston 10 from adidas for example is only just marginally heavier than the invincible run from nike but the two shoes share almost nothing in terms of their underfoot feel the invincible run is far more forgiving so if we were to compare the shoes on weight alone well that makes no sense whatsoever if you're thinking of the invincible run as the shoe that gets you out the door perhaps even when you're tired or you just need that extra little push well you just can't compare it against the boston 10 because that shoe just isn't going to do that for you am i right if i'm wrong let me know in the comments i think perhaps when i started this channel i was really obsessed with weight and now i just don't really care i've proved it with the ultra boost 22 that's a really heavy shoe but it feels great underfoot it's so smooth same with the Adi Star. I've had some really light shoes in my collection. If I was to rate them on weight only, ain't gonna work. Last up, why don't I give durability predictions in my reviews? Now, I'm a very slight fellow, guys. You know the Slender Man? He's my cousin. Think Rodney Trotter from Only Fools and Horses mixed with Peter Crouch. You know that scene in Forrest Gump with the feather? Well, I was its stunt double. Shoe durability is always going to be less of a factor to me. I didn't put anywhere near as much of a pounding or a grueling test into the shoes, basically because I'm as light as a feather. Durability is going to be down to so many attributes, though. Foot strike, the weight of the runner, perhaps your typical usage, maybe the routes that you run on. Could be down to conditions like the weather, the climate, sun, rain, all sorts of things. Some people will only use their running shoes to run as well, don't they? Many will switch them up, perhaps have some other shoes to get to where they're going to run and then switch the shoes around. Some people drag their feet a little bit, others over or under pronate. There's so many different variables, it's almost impossible to put a number on things. Again, if we put some sort of durability approximation onto things, it's going to put people off from testing out a shoe. Well, we've got shoe reviews coming at us left, right and centre. There seems to be two, three, four released every single week. I think it's very difficult to know at that point just how durable a shoe is going to be. I might talk about those types of things when I hit 100 miles or some significant issue appears with the shoe, but it's really hard to put a number on things. I just wouldn't want to do it. I think at 100 miles, you get a reasonable idea as to how the shoe is going to hold up over time. I'll be honest with you now, guys. I've got a chunk cut into my street flies already must have hit a rock or something or a piece of glass but it's cut a small chunk and yeah i'm upset about it it's gonna happen though that zoom x stuff is super soft and unless you're running on a treadmill 24 hours a day well it's gonna happen the outside world is just like that isn't it we get out there we get coughs and colds we bump ourselves we fall over it's just the way of it wear and tear is just something that's going to happen to a running shoe over time no matter how good it is. I mean, yeah, stuff like that shouldn't be apparent at 50 miles, but we've all seen it happen. You know, one shoe that's been a real letdown recently in terms of that durability on the outsole has been the Peg Trail 3. There's no pattern left on that now, and I'm struggling to walk on it on smooth surfaces. Yeah, you might say it's a trail shoe, but I think it's really seen as a commute shoe, perhaps from roads to trails, light trails. It will still be okay from that use case, but yeah, it's disappointing to see already. But at 100 miles, the Adios 6 barely showed any signs of wear whatsoever. In fact, it even felt better than it did when I took it out the box. So a short-term durability score is very much pin the tail on the donkey. It's a guesstimation. It's all it is. 
and you've got to remember that's just from the person reviewing it it could be completely different to you for example i really enjoyed that new trailer for doctor strange and the multiverse of madness but rick lester not so much so i hope i've laid to rest why i don't have those durometer scores why i don't give weight scores on my reviews and also why i don't try and guesstimate the overall durability of a shoe let me know your thoughts and opinions on all of this down in the comments again i want to make it very clear i'm not directing this at anybody in particular i'm literally just answering some of the questions received from some of the viewers musical interlude time really pleased to see an album that i completely missed actually back in 2020 called lost in the moment by dom and roland if you're into drum and bass this one's for you really interesting sounds here from dom and roland a little bit like a technological nightmare really interesting beats not too much amen brothers here wonderful soundscapes really pulls you in some nice atmospheres very subtle selections and lovely crisp production as well i particularly like the first track sand crawler slowly creeps up on you that one binary star and replicate as well worth checking out on this album the title track from the album lost in the moment really does sound like it could have been used in cyberpunk 2077 rolling beats here and they filter in really nicely at the beginning of the track a nice feeling of impending doom across a lot of these tunes just so refreshing to hear something that's not greatly over the top and in your face and brash the production's really nice to listen to go and check it out lost in the moment by dom and roland i think it's actually just one guy and the roland bit refers to perhaps some equipment that he had i like that Thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed the show and thanks for stopping by. If you haven't done so already, support the channel by picking up some merch and also joining us as a member. Links are below. There are three different tiers with various different perks so you can communicate more with not only myself but also the viewers on the channel. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos. Also, give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.